Oh, look at the time. Looks like we are overdue for another video. You often hear it said that there are two different kinds of people in this world. There are pancake people and there are waffle people. There are iPhone people and there are Android people. There are those who like Neil Diamond and those who don't. Myers-Briggs, AKA the 16 personalities, does this on several different levels. People are either thinkers or feelers, they're either introverts or extroverts, etc. But if you had to divide the 16 personalities into just two groups, what is the most significant dividing line between the personality types? Which division would you use? Many of you might argue that it's thinkers on one side, feelers on the other side. And yeah, uh, <laughs> thinkers and feelers do go about making decisions in very different ways. But some of you might say intuitives and sensors. That's the big dividing line. The sensors with their eyes on reality, the intuitives with their head in the clouds. But I am here to tell you no <laughs> to both of those. I don't think that either of those divisions are quite as significant as the one I am going to discuss today. And this division is not really talked about in traditional Myers-Briggs, but once your eyes are open to it, it really gives the 16 personalities a whole new level of depth. You will start to notice it immediately in your day-to-day -day life. Simply put, the biggest dividing line between the 16 personalities is, are you an IJ or EP type? Or are you an EJ or IP type? Uh, Frank, how did you come to this uh, division? It seems a bit arbitrary. How are these two groupings of the 16 personalities so different as to be the biggest division between them all? Well, I'm glad you asked. It all has to do with the dominant function. If you don't know what a dominant function is, you can check out this video in the card above my head called, What Are the Cognitive Functions? In short, and I feel like I keep saying in short and then the video just gets longer and longer. The dominant function is the most powerful force in your personality type. So for an example, an INFP has intuition and feeling. Those are the two preferred functions, but the feeling is dominant. Feeling is the most influential function in that particular personality type. So in that video I just mentioned, I explained how to figure out what the dominant function is for a personality type. You should really watch it. I know cognitive function seems boring, but it really isn't, I swear. Of course, in Myers-Briggs, everything has an opposite. So for example, if a type has feeling as their dominant function, as their most powerful function, then they will have to have the opposite thinking as their weakest inferior function. As another example, if a type has sensing as their dominant function like an ISFJ, they will have to have intuition as their weakest inferior function. This polarity, SAT word, of your strongest function with your weakest function causes the biggest dividing line between the types because the IJs and the EPs all have intuition or sensing as their dominant function, while the EJs and IPs all have thinking or feeling as their dominant function. So when you, start, when, but, <laughs> when you divide them up this way, you start to realize that these groupings are pretty distinct and pretty profound. Let's get into the nitty gritty of the differences and how you can spot them. Let's start by talking about the EJs and the IPs who have thinking or feeling dominant, which also means they have thinking or feeling inferior. Thinking and feeling are the decision-making functions. Myers-Briggs calls them the judging functions. That's how we decide what course of action we're gonna take. What is logical thinking or appropriate feeling to do here? Pop quiz, who makes decisions? If you answered people, you're right. Oh, actually, Frank, I have a very smart dog who makes decisions. Stop! Enough! <laughs> so the IPs and EJs are very aware of people and the disconnect between other people's decisions and their own decisions. Whenever you hear an EJ or an IP talking, you will hear them overly focus on other people in a way that might seem weird. Unnecessary. Gratuitous, I dare say. It's because the people are what they are always trying to process in any situation. The EJ and IP types just bring up other people all the dang time, oftentimes by name. Like you ask them, uh, what happened at work today? They might say, well, Jim made us all have a long, boring meeting. And I'm like, 
I don't even know who Jim is. But they gotta point out the person. They just gotta. To me, not being one of those types, it feels like they are going out of their way to do this. Like, why, why are we focusing so much on people right now? It's like a little awkward. Now, obviously, the other types, the IJs and the EPs, they also talk about people from time to time, but they don't do it as constantly as the EJs and IPs. For, for the IJs and the EPs, it's like we talk about people when necessary, but for the IPs and the EJs, it's necessary for them all the time. What this comes down to is the EJs and the IPs are really worried about being judged. What are other people's thinking and feeling judgments about me? It's really painful to them to be on the receiving end of someone else's judgment. I mean, no one likes to be judged, but for these types, it's like, this is the end of the world. You'll often hear EJs say something to the effect of, uh, I can't do this because what would people think about it? They're gonna judge me because of this. I don't wanna stick out and have people judge me because I made a decision on my own. That would hurt. That would really hurt, Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> the IP types feel similarly. They feel like everyone is trying to gang up on me. Everyone is against me just because I'm being myself. Then the IP types double down on being themselves and trying to shut out other people. And then they get shocked, surprised, and hurt when other people are still judging them. And even if you find people who are these types who are not necessarily like living in fear of other people, even if they don't have a great deal of social anxiety, and these types do struggle a lot with social anxiety, you will at the very least see them considering what other people are going to think about what they do like all the time. In the next part of the video, we're gonna talk about the IJs and the EPs and what they are focused on. Stay tuned. Oh, here I am. You thought maybe I was gone? <laughs> it's just 10 minutes of nothing. The EPs and IJs have intuition or sensing dominant, which are perceiving functions. These functions are about taking in information and processing it. These types, these, <laughs> these types are focused on what do we know? What do we not know? What is happening here? Why is it happening? And perhaps those negative questions like what do we not know, what are we not aware of, are the more significant ones for these types. Because not only do these types have dominant intuition or sensing, but they also have inferior intuition or sensing. The IJs and the EPs are always trying to ignore either the sensing or the intuition. It's like they're ignoring half of all the available information and they kind of... <laughs> They kind of know that. That's why they're worried and anxious about this. They're worried about what's going to happen. Why are things happening? So while the EJs and IPs are overly focused on people, the IJs and the EPs are overly focused on and bothered by things. If their car breaks down or if they have to clean their room or if the government does something. Now, of course, everyone is going to be bothered by all those things to a degree, but the IJs and EPs are really deeply triggered by it. So you ask them, what happened at work today? They might say, well, there was a boring meeting that wasted all of our time. And then I had a hundred emails to answer. I was like, buried by it, oh, I, I couldn't. T uh. <laughs> of course, the examples I'm giving you are like, not to be taken as literal in every circumstance, but generally it's gonna be about the things for these types, not really about the people. They're not gonna point out Jim and say it was Jim's fault, Jim did this. Jim. The IJs are focused in on a narrow band of reality. They have an anxiety that there's just so much information out there that I haven't accounted for. So many new things could come out of friggin' nowhere and get me. And that's kind of scary, man. Even something as simple as I have to update my phone. An IJ might have a fear of, well, what if I update it and then I can't use it like I'm used to using it? What am I gonna do in that situation? No! That will give them a great amount of anxiety. Whereas the EPs, they like to take in new information, but there's the fear of, uh, I haven't really stopped to get all the information lined up and organized, so I might not really know exactly 
what is going on here? What is happening? I'm not really prepared. I don't have a plan. And I'm afraid to stop and sort all this stuff out, sort out that information I've taken in because that would then prevent me from taking in more new information. So for the EPs, it causes them a lot of anxiety to stop and, for example, create a budget for their expenses or to organize their office or to write out a schedule because that makes them feel too boxed in and limited. Listen for the focus on things and systems and information and especially when something goes wrong with those things, the IJs and EPs will talk about it as though it's like a major catastrophe. I will never financially recover from this. Basically, what you want to ask yourself is, how is this person weird? Do they seem to be weirder around people, overly focused on the people and what they think, or are they overly focused on the things and the information and what we know and what we don't know? Thanks for watching. Check out this video here about are the 16 personalities even accurate? Or you can check out the whole playlist, find another video to watch that suits your fancy right here. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay cool and attractive.